Hi, this is Frank Taylor at Nature at Your Door, and I'm here with this amazing, unique, crazy looking imperial moth caterpillar. I was lucky enough to discover a female imperial moth outside my carport one morning, and it wasn't doing real well, it couldn't fly, so I put it in a container to keep it overnight and then put it out in some flowers the next day. Well, in between my doing that, this moth laid hundreds of eggs and I was able to watch and feed and watch these guys develop. And this is the story of the imperial moth and the growth of these caterpillars over, well, well over a month. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So I actually found this beautiful moth in my carport on July 23rd, and it's in fact an imperial moth, and its scientific name is Eccles imperialis. It's in a group called the Saturnidae. It's a group that includes the giant silk moths and the royal moths. These are actually the largest of all moths and butterflies in North America. As I explained in the intro, I found this female flopping around on my garage floor one evening. And I put it in a plastic container for safety until the next day when I could release it. However, I was surprised the next morning when I discovered it had laid eggs in the t container. The eggs themselves began to hatch on August 6, which was about 12 to 14 days after they were laid. I was also surprised to learn that these adult moths live only a few days or a week and just long enough to find a mate and for the females to lay eggs. As adults, they don't even feed, so their sole purpose in their wing stage is only reproduction and is actually a very short part of their life cycle. The adults range across a large part of eastern U.S. from Florida all the way to Canada. However, their numbers seem to be diminishing and disappearing in northern New England area of their range. Locally, these moths may have up to two broods or life cycles per year, and farther north, perhaps only one. They'll overwinter in the soil in a chrysalis stage and emerge in the spring. The caterpillars are known to feed on a wide variety of host trees, including pines, oaks, hickories, walnuts, maples, sweet gum, and many more. So when these guys hatched, I offered them a smorgasbord of leaves, including local red maple, sassafras, oak, tulip poplar, and white pine that I found growing around the area where I found the adult moth. The caterpillars quickly gravitated to the white pine and it fed exclusively on that. After they made their choice, I provided them with fresh pine needles daily and I housed them outdoors in the carport, uh, exposed to natural light and a plastic container with a paper towel on the bottom for ease of cleaning and a screen top to be sure it was well ventilated. The caterpillars, of course, ate a great deal and doing so also produced a great deal of frass. So to ensure their health in their living quarters, they were cleaned regularly. Of course, it was fascinating to watch them eat and observe their characteristics close up. They had a fascinating array of scary looking spines and hairs and turbicles. Caring for these caterpillars became a joint effort. As I left Virginia for an extended period of time, I was lucky that a good friend and neighbor and her nature-loving daughter took care of them and photographed and videotaped them in my absence. While caring for and handling these caterpillars, we did not experience any stinging sensation or adverse skin reactions. However, some people are sensitive to their protective structures and sensitive people will develop a rash from contact with these caterpillars. Overall, one should be extremely cautious about hairy caterpillars or caterpillars with spines. Many of them are highly venomous and can inflict very painful stings, rashes, or skin irritations. As a general rule, I always say never touch a hairy caterpillar. As the caterpillars develop, they may exhibit many color morphs ranging from brown to burgundy and even bright green. These caterpillars grow by molting and the stages between the molts are called instars. The imperial moth caterpillars will go through five instars or stages, each with their own distinct characteristics. 
It was fascinating, of course, to watch them eat and grow over a period of time that began August 6th until we released them into their host trees on October 1st. So these caterpillars spent almost two months in this larval stage. We even had the opportunity to observe them molt. Like all insects that have an exoskeleton that is hard, it does not grow with the organism. This outer skin has to be shed so that the inner soft skin can expand and the organism can grow into that new exoskeleton. The giant silk moths and the royal moths have the largest caterpillars you might find, and our imperial moth caterpillars were no exception. When they reached this large caterpillar size and we observed some of them stop eating, we knew it was time to release them back into the wild. We did not want to hold them and have them go into a chrysalis stage in captivity because this last generation would be the one that overwinter, and these caterpillars overwinter underground. So we placed them back onto the leaves of local pine trees so that each caterpillar could determine whether it needed to eat some more or whether it was time for it to descend the tree, dig a burrow into the soil, form a chrysalis, and overwinter in this chrysalis state. In the spring, these moths will emerge from the chrysalises that began to mate and lay eggs, and they'll likely have two generations in the summer before overwintering again as a chrysalis. So let's now turn to Isabella to summarize a bit of what we've seen. I'm Isabella. I'm going to share about all about these caterpillars. Cool. Did you take care of those caterpillars this summer? Yes. How, how did it go? It went good. They ate white pine. They have these dots that look really cool with that black. And the face looks so cool. It's like... It doesn't even look real, but it is. Well, we had to put more in, and there was lots and lots and lots of poop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if they eat a lot, there's going to be a lot of poop, right? Yeah. yeah. The best part, I guess, was, was seeing them. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door and learning about imperial moths. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature. From frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode nature at your door.